Yo, what's up guys? Uh, we're back with another video. And you might have seen the thumbnail and be like, again? Again what? There's no way this man pulled another LD5, right? He literally just got Maximilian. We've seen that in the video yesterday. Well, let me tell you that we had this Black Friday stuff. Well, I just got those because, well, any reason, I guess. Like, re-up reasons. But we also have those things, well, not those, not those. But we had a whole bunch of things over here. And in particularly this one with the all transcendent, or not the, 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 the all inclusive, whatever scroll thingy it is called. So we had a bunch of those. I started buying a bunch of those. Did a bunch of summons. And after a bunch of summons, we got this very specific unit over here. <laughs> Yes, this is an LD5. This is the, um, what's it called? Ezio? Is this an Ezio? No, this is not Ezio. This is the other one. Wait, what's the other one even called? I totally forgot. What is the normal name or the AC name of this thing if you pull it? Oh, it is Ezio. Yeah, it's light Ezio. So, yeah, it has the air assassinate skill, which does the inflict damage that ignore defense. And then also ups the attack bar if you defeat additionally passive skills of all enemies are excluded. So. That is pretty nice. Pretty interesting unit. But yeah, once again, not really the unit I'm looking for. But okay, I guess it's a siege offense unit. So I wanted to make the video of 10 different hits with 10 different LD5s. Um, that's when I pulled the Eleanor. I was like... Hmm, I can make that. Then I pulled Maximilian and I was like, oh, that makes it easier. Now I pulled this guy and it makes it very easy because this guy is just straight up siege offense. I could maybe build it as like a gimmicky-ish killer of Julian's because this threats to Julian's like instantly, which is somewhat interesting. But his S2 and his S1 are somewhat on the weaker side, I would say. Like the S1 doesn't really do much, but most S1s don't. And this thing with threat state and counter attack, it is not that great. Also, unfortunately, this stupid thing goes into Resistance Awakening. Like, didn't you guys already learn that from Oberon that that's pretty dumb? Like, we don't need Resistance on a unit like this. Strangely enough, his base HP is actually not that bad. But, yeah, interesting unit, interesting unit. So, I guess I will switch the goal. Of course, I'm still going to make the video of the 10 times an LD5 hit in Siege. But there's actually another goal that kind of popped up. In guild versus guild in the server, you can use 15 units. I need three more LDs to get 15 <laughs> units, and then I can do full LDs on all of the hits. Not sure if that's really going to be great. I probably will be lacking supports because I do have, well, I have a few supports LDs. No, actually, I have quite a decent amount. But yeah, this one, uh, I actually was, why is it not this thing? Or why is it like if we're AC thing, like what, why is it not one of those two? Those are so sick. But yeah, I would say not the most interesting of LD5s. But definitely, <laughs> like how the hell did I pull two LD5s? Literally in, I think in 22 hours. So yeah, that's, that's insane. So what is my plan with this unit? Well, I did a little bit of testing in arena stuff. And I don't think it's too great for arena, but... Let's see if we can find Camillas without a team that's incredibly fast like a Celia. Uh, let's say something like this. So this is my premium LD5 team. <laughs> kind of something that I crafted up. I'm like, hmm, could this really work? You could just also simply just go for a Bastet plus something. I do notice that, uh, well, I don't have skill-ups on them yet. Because you can skill them up with 4 stars and I wasted my 4 stars on something else. But yeah, this team is somewhat interesting because you can give the attack buff over here. And uh, you can boost up this guy to take the next turn. You can instantly snipe a Camilla if it's below 47k HP. We can do this thing over here. And then uh, we have this skill, which we can kill, for example. I don't think you actually kill because you have to be... Like, the Cassandra currently is pretty freaking fast, so it doesn't really do too much of damage. But, yeah, if we then boost up the Cassandra again, then... Actually, maybe the Jamar boosting is more interesting. I could give attack buff right now, but at this point, it's somewhat less interesting. And we go for this skill once again. The piercer kills that as well. And then we kill that thing too. 
Would I have been able to just one hit the whole fucking team with the Grogan? Yeah, except the Camilla. So against Camillas, this is somewhat interesting. Might be a nice thing, but it's kind of slow. It does pretty much win, but it, it is kind of slow. I also thought that this S3 would go through invisibility, but it actually doesn't. Just the S1 does, so in this case you can still hit it, but only with an S1. So, yeah, pretty interesting unit. It will most likely be used something like this. I would say that in arena offense, it's probably not the best in slot because, well, also I have to build this Cassandra to, like, a pretty crazy amount of stats. Because the Cassandra has to move in front of the Amunculus and the Amunculus has to be fast. So the Cassandra is currently, well, it looks like I don't have artifacts, but it's just fucked in China or something. I don't know what it is. Like, my clients all bug out here in... Uh, or at least a bunch of my clients bug out here, but I'm not entirely sure what it is. But I do have artifacts on it. So yeah, the stats are pretty decent, I would say, to get this much attack, this much crit rate, and this much speed. And yeah, that is kind of needed if I want to use it like this. And yeah, as mentioned, I don't have the skill ups yet. I could easily skill it up, but I don't have the 4-star skill ups for it right now. And yeah, it's an interesting unit. It's definitely an interesting unit. It will definitely be something that I will mainly use in Siege. RTA, I don't really think it will have too much play. So let's say you have that defense. Can I just simply set it up? You have that very typical defense. I'm pretty sure that the units are not ruined up, but just for the idea of it. Uh, let's go for... Duh, duh, duh. You see those defenses with a Kicklet and then a Perna. It's not a great defense by all means, but you see it from time to time. So if we were to hit this with this team... This is going to be very easy because you have a bunch of those passives and you just thread through the passives. Plus this team has a higher base speed value than normally a team with like a... Uh, what's it called? Than normally the team that I would have for like a Grogan or something. But yeah, of course, uh, this first hit doesn't do as much because you don't have the attack buff yet. You're only going to have the attack buff in the second rotation of this. But there's a bunch of ways that I could use this. I could even combine like Dark Cassandra with like a Bastet and then Eon as well. So there's a bunch of options that you could say like, okay, I can pair this with. I do notice that him instantly getting the full attack bar, does like a, that's one of his most recent buffs that he had. Doesn't really feel that strong, I would say. Like it has some potential, but it's not that great. Oh, this team is actually kind of interesting as well with... Uh, like, this is one of our backline-ish teams that were kind of like, well, let's give that a try. It could be something on good room quality or stuff like that. But, yeah, with this... Oh, whoops. Wrong skill. That's, that, that's how to mess up your own hit. Definitely pay attention when doing those kind of things. But in this case, we could say, like, okay, we do a little bit of chip damage over there. We boost up this guy. Uh, the... Cassandra on the other side definitely is not going to be high HP, so we'll die to a 32k. We go for the reset. We boost up self in this case, and it boosts up self to get the speed buff over here right now to start lapping. And then with the lapping, we have the speed buff over there. The next unit moves that because it has speed buff from before, and they kill that. So, yeah, kind of interesting-ish. You can say, like, okay, I'll throw the threat state on you right now, and therefore you start hitting that. This is kind of useful. I'm not even sure. Like, yeah, okay. You have the counter in there. It's kind of funny, but I wouldn't really say that, that it's too great of a skill 2 or skill 3. So the unit is all about the skill... Or not too great of a skill 1 and a skill 2. So the unit is all about the skill 3. So, and... Yeah, the, the main issue is for me is that he awakens into resistance. Why the hell would you awaken into resistance, sir? That doesn't make any sense. It's the same thing as like Oberon and that kind of stuff. Like I think Oberon still awakens into... Oh, it used to awaken into resistance and now they changed it to awaken it into crit rate. And there were a bunch more units like that. I think Serath was also kind of on that. Was Serath also that way? I'm not too sure. Yeah, I think Serath also used to awaken into something useless. So, Comptus, you started switching a whole bunch of those, so might as well add this one in that as well. We are expecting a balance patch. And the thing is, the more LD5s I have, the higher the chance are that some of my LD5s are in the balance patch. So, I would say currently, let's rate my LD5s from worst to best. Uh, let's look at light first. I would say worst is you. Um, second worst is probably well then we have to choose between Ian 
uh, Nigong and Lima. So I would probably say Ian next, then Nigong next, and then Lima. So Lima's best in my light. And if we go for these, we have Gianna, Tsongshin, Lauk, Rogan, Nefties, Dark Cassandra, Maximilian, and Sienna, if I didn't already mention her. I would say weakest here is probably the monkey. Second weakest right now, I would actually give it to Gianna almost. Now, would I give it to Gianna? I'm not sure. Let's say for usability, I use Gianna the least from all of my dark LD5s right now. So that's... That maybe says something, because it doesn't really have a slot in Siege Offense or Defense, Arena Offense or Defense, and it's kind of bad in current RTA meta as well, so... Yeah, I think Gianna's actually, which was my signature unit for as long as possible. Oh yeah, and uh, Oracles have pants in here. That's that's a Chinese thing. But yeah, I would say Gianna's probably after that, or I would say Monkey and then Grogan. Or no, I would say Monkey, Sienna, Grogan, Gianna, and then... No, I would say Dark Cassandra's worse as well. I would say from best, I would probably say Nefties is best. Second best, I would probably have to give it to Maximilian or... Yeah, I guess i give it to Maximilian. A lot of them are kind of on the same tiers. Like, it's pretty interesting. Like, I actually want to go back to the video where I made the tier list and look at where I placed the units that I pulled recently because I'm pretty sure that I placed this one and... Uh, where the other one at? This one pretty low. And I would say Maximilian is somewhat more in the mid to high tier. But interestingly enough, a lot of people were asking on the previous video, like, oh, you're going to be back in SWC? Well, I have my take on Maximilian. I said it before I pulled the unit, like months before that I already had like my idea about what I think about the Maximilian. I do have the Nefties already. And the interesting thing is a lot of people are like, yeah, Maximilian, Nefties, that's like great synergy. It's like uh, they do the same thing. They get countered by the same thing. So... Is it great synergy to complement each other and do something nicer together or doing the same thing both because they're pretty much similar units? So that is definitely something I'm going to test in future videos. I would say I think maybe Maximilian is slightly overhyped, but I actually will talk about that in future videos. So I don't want to spoil too much in that. But I also might be proving myself wrong because I'm definitely going to be uh, crafting like a Maximilian cleave and just Maximilian spamming. Probably with Nefties as well, just to give it a try to see how it works. And maybe we'll climb a bunch of ranks, maybe we drop a bunch of ranks. But in all honesty, question for me to you, how many G3 players do you actually see actively use Maximilian? Plus, aren't all of those comps like heavy LD spams or just Maximilian and something else? So, those are my two questions to you. Well, just a quick update video. Uh, I'm still in Shanghai here for today. I'm flying to Korea tomorrow. I booked a pretty decent-ish hotel that I think I can also stream at. So I will be trying to do the stream. It's going to be like afternoon-ish time in Korea. So very early morning and late evening. So very early morning in Europe, late evening in the US. But I will try to get some streams in and I will try to use some Maximilian stuff. I'm not entirely sure if I will translate that into a video as well because I don't really want to do too much editing while I'm here and RTA videos kind of tend to bound to be more editing-ish kind of stuff. But we shall see about it. Maybe I'll just uh, edit it the moment I get back home. But there's a lot of stuff I want to make content on when I'm back home because I still want to do like a decent showcase of like the Light Pony, a uh, decent showcase of this unit. Well, that's just going to be a Siege video. He's going to be in there. A good showcase of Maximilian, of course. I was actually thinking about getting a new skin on him, but we're actually going to get an RTA skin on him, so it's good timing for that. I personally, I like the normal skin more than I like the uh, current skin that is there, mainly because this has like a gun and that kind of stuff. So I'm pretty curious about the new skin in those. Uh, and I definitely do want to make a video about... Or I'm definitely going to do a rush with a Christina. People are also asking, it's like, oh, you're going to do arena rush with Maximilian? Uh, no. No, the Nefties is just like 100 times better for that. And the simple fact why uh, Nefties is like 100 times better for that is just because she has the heal block. And the heal block just fucks up so many more things that Maximilian isn't too great for arena offense. You... I might give it a try in a certain way, but I think it is not as great. It does have the absorb and the continuous damage, which is a little bit different. But I don't really think that Maximilian is too great for arena offenses. But I might give him a try, because why not? And then I also pulled this thing, which I've seen a bunch of like top-end players like uh, Lest and other people play around with. 
So I'll probably give this guy a good try as well. I'm still not entirely sure why this guy would be that good though. Like sure he has his stuns and he has like more stuns and damage max HP. Which might be a little bit useful. I guess it's kind of a CC unit and then it has the, the, the Zog skill. <laughs> which is a strip and a branding. Which is not too bad. But too bad it's just one steal. Like if it would steal the whole thing and then put branding. Then we'll be like, yo, that's a pretty gangster skill for three turn cooldown. But one strip is always one of those things. Like, yeah, it could be nice. could be not nice. But yeah, that is it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. And yeah, I'm on 12 LD5s right now. And I have no clue how. And that is probably also running out of my LD5 luck for quite a while. So I can't really complain about that. Guys, thanks a lot for watching. We're going to see a lot more videos when I come back in the Netherlands, which is going to be on, I would say, 29th to 30, probably a 30, 31. I'll start making more videos. Well, there's no 31 of November. 1st of December. Man, time is going so fast. Guys, thanks a lot for watching. I'm rambling on as always. And see you in the next one.